Welcome everyone, I'm Tim and this is the controller. Thanks for clicking on Fallout 4, you only live once. Last time we improved our skills just a little bit by picking up a couple of skill magazines and were able to return to Nick Valentine to turn in the Reunions quest. Today we get to head back out and venture on over to Good Neighbor and check out the Memory Den over there as we continue to push the main quest forward. And if you've been enjoying the content, please hit that like and subscribe button as it would be greatly appreciated. But with that, let's jump into it. Before we head on over towards Good Neighbor, I want to swing on back to Hangman's Alley as I have a lot of food to cook up and I need to really work on some inventory management as we are flirting with weight capacity. Now that I'm back at Hangman's Alley, I, gave up I should check out that I weapon that I picked up from Cricket, which is this, where is it? Night Vision Boosted Laser Sniper Rifle. So, Boosted capacitor, I don't really care about, but this improved sniper barrel is about as good as you can get for damage. That requires science too, which I am a super far away away from that. We'll just slap a short barrel on this rifle now. And I think that is the only thing that I want to switch over to the lucky. And instead of the improved long barrel, which we are sitting at 100 damage with our current adrenaline. If we switch that over to the improved sniper, we are up to a healthy 145. So that has now become one of my strongest, if not my strongest, weapon. And in fact, it has been. Now, it's set up a little bit goofy as that's a sniper barrel. So I won't be able to get as many shots off in VATS, but the range is incredible on it, and the accuracy is still all right with the reflex sight. Now I did grab the Raider chest piece out of the ah uh, whatever that's called of the workshop. Uh, the bolstering raider piece, which I kind of want to give that a little bit of a look as I took a little bit more damage last episode. The extra boost on the chest piece is now up to 12 and 12 for ballistic and energy. So I think I might swing past Diamond City and see what that can do. See if that can get up comparable to the other by improving it as much as I can. But as I am tired right now, and I'm not thirsty or hungry, I'm only sitting on 20% adrenaline. I think I will sleep for a healthy 12 hours as I am doubly sick of where I require more sleep and more sleep more often. This should get me squared away in that. And not sick just a little hungry and thirsty that is easily remedied and I do have a lot of meat to cook up so this should give me quite a bit of XP just from this can get one more vegetable starch never can have too much adhesive There we go. Can get five bloat flies. Four blood bug steaks. I think I hear gunshots. Hurry up. Definitely hear gunshots, but nobody seems too concerned. About what's going on. I 
Sheffield, do you have this taken care of? Not liking that there is action as close as to Hangman's Alley as there always seems to be when I am cooking up a bunch of meat. But it seems to have subsided for now. Eh, not as much mole rat as I thought, but eight mutt chops. Six steaks. I will be eating good in the neighborhood. This takes less. That actually gave me a pretty good chunk of XP. Top off my food now. Hit up that death claw steak. That's just been staring at me for a little while now. Now we should be the rain cleared up and we should be good to head on out. I'm kind of thinking I'll on the way to good neighbor. I'll just kind of swing past kind of along the freedom trail there and approach that way as it's be good to get a few more ghouls cleared out. Well, I swung into Diamond City to see what the Raider piece needed. Myrna actually had the supplies that I would need to fix it on up. We can bring this on over to Buttress. Which now we're doing, that'd be doing 26 and 23, which I think is just ever so slightly better than what I have on currently. And the more times I get hit, obviously, the better that armor will do and I can put it over to padded I haven't been hit with explosives too much but as a couple of my grenade throws bounced off an invisible wall if I took less damage from explosives either from myself or from others I think that is a good decision protection from commonwealth weaponry so now when we go to compare the two Bolstering is technically doing 26 and 23, which it looks like it's a little bit worse, but it is a little bit better on the ballistic and energy weapons, if I am reading that correctly. I do lose a little bit in the radiation resistance, but I am picking up the padded, and it is virtually the same weight as what I had. So, really, I don't lose any carry capacity. Now, I kind of forgot I needed to adjust what I was carrying. I don't need to be carrying as much food as I have. So, I'm going to run back to Hangman's Alley. And then I'll just meet you back outside here when that's done. Alright, well, I am coming around by the Boston Public Library. And there is... Uh, Brotherhood Vertibird. Looks like it's got a couple knights. They are doing some fighting. Might be fighting Trinity Tower over there. As they're circling. That is a fight they probably will end up losing. But it is good to see the Brotherhood just venturing around the Commonwealth. Oh, trying to clean up some of the trash. I kind of wanted to go the same route I had taken before, as it is at least mostly safe. Can kind of walk just free and clear. I will be coming up on... Oh. Danger from where? Not the super mutant. Where am I getting danger from? Well, it's mostly safe. A few raiders dotted around. But, seems like they've lost interest. As I'm on Hubris Comments, Comics, 
I am tempted to go in there as there is some pretty good loot inside. Uh, I am sitting at zero adrenaline as I had just slept, so I don't think the time is right to go in. But that is definitely something that will be on my list later on. Now, I am a little curious. Okay, try to go someplace else, Vats. How much... Would a headshot do on Swan? Can't get a headshot. Ducking for cover. So I kind of want to be in a little bit better position, I guess. Before I would potentially take a shot. I could always run and flee into the Boylston Club and just kind of hope for the best. Some super mutants right there. Got the combat zone nice and close as well. Okay. Game seems to be a bit jumpy. Oh, uh, that won't do a whole lot on him as I'm, again, not sitting on very much adrenaline. Hey, protector on buddy. Do you want to come out and give me a little demo? Must be not. Keep thinking this is stupid and this is stupid. This is stupid. Especially when I didn't even hit him. All right. All right, Swan. I think it is time for you to go down. Whether you want to or not. A little bit more XP. Okay, where are you at? Bunch of rad barrels there. Don't want to get too close. See on the other side? There he is. That's is a. I don't think I can throw that far. Bunch of red barrels in this building, too. I just did a full loop. You know, no biggie. No, I don't want to be too close. So, okay. Here's the plan. Throwing back-to-back -back grenades to wake him up. And then crit him twice in the face and cross my fingers. Okay, that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. 80% torso shot, two shots. Fantastic. And down he goes. Oh, I got my heart beating pretty good. I really didn't have a good escape path. Well, swan's down. One less enemy to worry about. I probably would have panicked and then tried to fit through this opening here, and which I can't, and then I would have been squashed. Swan does have some good stuff on him, but as he's in the water, not worth it for me to go after it. All right, Mr. Super Mutant. Complete miss. 
That one got him. Here comes a mutant hound. The uh, combat zone is there. Kate is a really good companion. I might go in there at some point as well. But maybe not right now. Kind of the same thing. I'll do that on the same loop when I come in with for Hubris as I kind of want a little bit more adrenaline for that. We'll just kind of follow the freedom trail along. Get some ghouls in there. Not sure if I have any more grenades. I must. Get them woke up. There are a couple easy locations to uh, tick off on the map, like that Massachusetts State House. That's ah, all a little bit more XP. Better get the one that's a little bit closer to me. He's going to take two shots, which I don't have. Since they know, switch over to my Lucky. Doesn't take quite as much action points. Here you are. That's unfortunate. Yes, here I am, ghoul. Come get me. But not really, come get me. I kind of like this laser pistol. I have to give it a little bit more run. Maybe I should have tried, tried it on Swan to see what it would do with him. Don't think there are any more ghouls in here. Eh, not terrible stuff there. 308, I don't think I'll ever use it again, but there might be a scenario where I would need it for a different weapon. Probably go back to uh, my sneaky weapon. Will be some super mutants in here. There's one. Oh, he's damaged. Oh, come on, stop walking so fast. Yeah, stand right there. If memory serves on the back side of this building is a guaranteed legendary super mutant. At least every time I've come through, get to the opposite side of this building and there's a super mutant flanked by just a couple leveled super mutants as well. They usually come in guns blazing too. So I'm not gonna really look too hard for them. Although, when it, I mean, good neighbors right here. Be a couple dogs down there. Oh, that doesn't look too tough.
This just helps build the old adrenaline up. Maybe I'll get a little bit more, feel a little more risky on the way back out a good neighbor. I do have three crits. Hmm. So tempted. There's the mass fusion building that I cleared before. And there's a lovely rust devil. That is also part of Automatron. They sure really do like to come take over the Commonwealth. Now if I just eat and drink up, maybe I will go legendary hunting. As I can always just sprint right on over to Good Neighbor and then I would be in safety. There, that action bar is looking a little bit better. Now, if memory serves, there aren't too many in this building. I think actually only uh, three or four total. Now it is... Ooh, there's one up top. I forgot there was a second level to this. Oh, and there's one right there. That's a good shot right there. Get a VATS angle, What's nothing. That? Get him, get him, get him. No luck. Whoa, there's one right there. I think he might have dropped down from the second story. Yeah, back to hidden. Now, yeah, as memory serves, that's probably it for in this building. Unless I happen to be mistaken. There are a lot of gore bags and just generic loot which is always handy super mutants have some good throwables but yeah raider meat bag there a few meat bags outside a couple on the table but what i'm really looking at is on the back side here is a door that door leads me just Right around that corner, I believe there is a guaranteed legendary raider. Or not raider. Legendary super mutant. So the question becomes, how bad do I want that legendary? There are rust devils also in the area. Haven't seen them a whole lot. I don't know what is necessarily the right decision. The right decision is probably Got it. not exiting this door. But if I can just maybe draw some attention this way. That didn't do anything. And I'm out of grenades. Feel free to turn tail and run. It is this way, right? Huh. Every single time I've played, there has been a legendary and two others right out here. Now it's just making me look like a liar. Well then, scratch that. Not guaranteed legendaries. Not even super mutants. Well, 
That's a little bit disappointing, actually. I didn't get shot, so that's good. Hmm. Maybe it's just I happen to run into a random encounter every time that I was back around there. Or, and maybe the Rust Devils took the place of the Super Mutants. Here is a lovely, savory, good neighbor. Then you know they're, you know, unsavory when they just throw a random settler right there. This guy will try to shake Hold you down. First time in good you can just walk right in and shoot him, and Hancock it. will tell you, Hey, you good job. Or you're the one who's going to need insurance. What was that? I, I couldn't hear over the sound of all that pathetic. You hand over everything you got in their pockets, or accidents start happening to you. Big, bloody accident. Someone steps through the gate the first time. Well, Hancock will take care of him. We will head on over to the memory den. Brotherhood of Steel. Better stay out of Well, Nick will have met us here, which here he is. Looks like he did the talking to this lovely lady here, Irma. She's downstairs. And we just have to head on downstairs to meet up with Amari, who then we can hop on into the pods and see what Kellogg has Dr. to say. Amari? Yes. Wait, I know you. You're in the railroad. What's this all about? If I start cackling like well, Amari is going to hook up Kellogg's okay. implant into Nick, Let's and see. we can hop on in and see what is in the brain. I'm now, while you are in these Valentine, memory den pods, you, you do still get hungry and thirsty, so you never want to be Static. too hungry or thirsty as you go in, because there is the potential that That's you could just, that. you know, roll over and the die while you are in there. And that would never be a, a good, good thing to happen. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Well, now we are going to be going into memories of Kellogg. You can learn a little bit more about Kellogg and his upbringing, but you can just skip on and go on to the next ones. Right on to the end. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Ah, completed Dangerous Minds. That is a very easy quest. waiting for you upstairs. And that got us to the next level up. And as I was in there, I did get a little bit thirsty, but nothing too crazy, as we now learned that the Institute uses teleportation. And they have a scientist that we have to go locate in the glowing sea named Brian Virgil. And now that we are coming back out to the exit of the Memory Den location, we will end up having to venture on into the glowing sea, but that won't be next time as there is a little bit more prepping I would like to do before going in. And as the Dangerous Minds did a level up, we should get that taken care of right now. I'm thinking we will have to keep pushing Ninja just a little bit further. Yeah. Always want to be able to do a little bit more damage, sneak attack. I do have a couple silenced weapons. So now we are doing 3x the normal damage, which should be enough to take out a lot of enemies from range. But now that we have pushed the main quest just a little bit further, I think that is enough for now. Thanks for joining and thanks for watching. And until next time, Powering off.